This is a Matt Stevens session called the Power Pyramid on the Paso Cordoy. I'm sure it involves another P as well, pain. Let's go on with the warm up and then I'll explain all. Well, welcome to the Paso Cordoy Power Pyramid session on the go. Epic climb, iconic climb, in fact, of the Paso Cordoy in the beautiful Alta Badia region of the Dolomites. We're on board with Dan Lloyd, but I designed this rather challenging training session. But for the first three minutes, it's gonna be a nice little warm up, gradually increasing that effort level from two up to five. And just to explain a little bit about this session, the power pyramids basically, it's a relatively even effort throughout this ride, but for good measure, thrown in a few cheeky little 30 second interval flat out efforts as well. There's four of those throughout the session. So let me just talk you through this step by step while we're warming up on the lower slopes of this absolutely stunning climb. So first up, after the first three minutes of the warm up, we're gonna move on to three minutes riding at tempo. So that's an effort level of around seven. And from there, we're gonna move up another level, so a perceived effort level of eight. We're gonna ride at sweet spot for three minutes. Then we're gonna do the first of our intervals, and that's basically flat out. It's a 10 out of 10 effort for 30 seconds, but at a low cadence of around 70 RPM. The rest of this session is all at 90 RPM, or there or thereabouts. And then following that first 30 second interval, come straight back out down to sweet spots and not a lot of time to recover at all. It's really gonna help you with your endurance and help increase your functional threshold power as well. As well as increasing your, well, improving your top end for the sprint. So we go from the sweet spot, back for three minutes, back down to tempo for three minutes, back up to sweet spot for three minutes. And that's the pyramid done. And then we hit mm. another 30 second flat out sprint. And we continue that until we get mm. to the fourth and final interval. Mm. So it's a pretty tough session. So make sure that your room is well, well ventilated. Hopefully you've done that already. And that you're drinking plenty of fluids. Mm. And I'm using a smart trainer, a Cyclops mm. hammer, and I've got the resistance level set to an equivalent gradient of around 3%. So I should be doing most of this on the small ring, just to replicate what it's like. Just increasing my effort level a little bit. So just coming out of the warm up now. And we're riding at tempo, keeping it around 90 RPM. So it's all about pacing. It's the sort of effort you can sustain on a climb. Breathing heavily, but you're fully in control. And able to talk. I'm gonna ride like this for three minutes. Keeping a real smooth rhythm. Just find the gear that works for you. Sit there and think about your shape on the bike, the way you're putting the power through the pedals, whilst at the same time admiring this absolutely gorgeous view. you. Look at that. Some of the big, biggest and best and most epic battles in the Giro d'Italia were fought out on this climb. And it tops out of the top from memory around 2,330 metres, I think. I've had the pleasure of riding on numerous occasions now. And it is one of my favourite climbs. So really you can control your breathing. It's not too hard, but you should be able to just feel the bite on a real good endurance session. And also this sort of session really helps you instill a sense of discipline in measuring a long effort, but at the same time, puts you into the red, especially when you head towards the peak of the pyramid. So we'll go to sweet spot in a minute. Then hit that sprint, but then there's no rule for recovery from that sprint at all. Back into sweet spot, and you're only real recovery until the very end 
is at this level here. So make sure after your first couple of efforts, you're confident that you've got your perceived effort levels right. Because if you're riding with a power meter, you'll know where we're, you know you're there or thereabouts in relation to your functional threshold power. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that's your the amount of effort power you can put out for around about an hour. So FTP is going to be around seven and a half to eight roughly in terms of effort level. To get these nice and smooth, because next up you're going to lift it in actually only 15 seconds. Two, sweet spot. A couple of people punch at the side of the road there, sorry about that chaps. Here we go. Just lift it slightly. Hold this for three minutes. This is a long climb. So pacing, absolutely vital, especially if you ever end up in this neck of the woods in the Dolomites. Once you get above 15, 16, 1600 meters, you'll start to feel the rarefied atmosphere. Less oxygen in the air, of course, making it harder to deliver the same power that you're used to for a given heart rate. It's really an interesting experience. So pacing on long climbs at altitude, even more important, because once you put yourself into red and get it wrong, it's very hard, unless you almost come to a standstill to get yourself back into that rhythm again. So not a particularly explosive session, apart, I looked at the session when I was designing it, and thought, yeah, this is great, it's gonna really build your endurance, smooth even, session it's gonna hurt but I thought we need to spice it up a little bit break it up a little bit hence those 30 second bursts and again a bit counterintuitive the bursts are gonna be at a low cadence you can choose to ride them in or out of the saddle whatever feels best for you It'll be interesting to see what Dan did so just over a minute before the first one. Just going to gear up a little bit. Just as he would on the climb, it's no problem at all, especially on these longer indoor trainer sessions, to get out of the saddle just to ease your lower back, your glutes. You're working different muscles. I often find that 40 revs every few minutes, well, every five or 10 minutes does the trick. So, coming up to the first of these flat out efforts. And remember, when you finish the effort, you get back down to this speed again. It's going to be hard, but this sort of session will really reap dividends for you. If you discipline, you apply yourself, and you do it right. So, two and one, here we go. So low revs. Just power through. Come on! Only four of these. I think Dan's out of the saddle. Okay. Knock it back. Keep it at 90 RPM. Back to sweet spot. This is great to improve your general fitness. 
because it feels so counterintuitive not to back off after an interval. This increases the stresses on your cardiovascular and your muscular system. Your body has to work hard to get rid of the toxins in the muscles and that's why your legs are screaming. So keep on top, keep it smooth. Still a long way to go, but you're doing great. Just settle back into that rhythm. And the sweet spot at or around your FTP just below. Sustainable but uncomfortable. So make sure you're at a level where you know you can keep going because we've still got half an hour. And of course, you can run a climb like this. There's no hiding place at all. So having that skill and that discipline to maintain a certain pace, absolutely vital. And this is what this session is primarily all about, with a few tests along the way in the form of those rather spiteful little sprints. But you know me, I don't like to do things the easy way. So, just over a minute of riding at sweet spot. Then we'll drop it down a little bit. Only one level to tempo, so I can just ease off the pressure a little bit for three minutes, we'll back up to sweet spot, and then, yep, you guessed it, the next sprint, or the next interval. Look at the sights, this really is. Every time I do one of these videos, I say it's my favorite climb, because it brings back the memories flooding back. They really are special. It's a long straight section on the climb at the moment, which allows you to focus on the road ahead. Not a big variation in gradient on this climb. That's why it's good to get into a set rhythm and just turn your legs, stay focused on keeping that effort level as smooth and as even as possible. And also you're pedaling too. So you'll be glad to know we're now going to drop it from eight to seven. So just a little bit less in the pedals, allowing you to recover. Now many people just ride the climb at one speed, which is fine. But if you're out with a group where you're intending to race, then it's nice, or important in fact, to be able to change your pace whilst under pressure and also react to pace changes within the group and to test yourself a little bit more. The body can then become increasingly better at expressing itself in different dynamic environments out on the road. And a session like this will improve your explosive power because of the four sprints. It'll help improve your FTP and also improve your endurance and also strength as well because we're doing these sprints at a quite a low cadence having to put a lot of force through the pedals and a high amount of torque which uses a different set of muscles but you dig down in the muscle fibers different things take place when you really do apply more force so the same power is put through the pedals if that's not too strange but you're delivering more force per pedal stroke so, keep it nice and smooth, keep it at 90. In a minute and a half, we're gonna pick it back up again to sweet spot. So keep drinking. And if you haven't ever been out to the Dolomites, to be honest with you, I couldn't recommend it enough. I raced there as a pro, and to come back now with GCN, it's wonderful. Riding at a slightly different pace than they used to. It's just, the scenery is jaw dropping. It's majestic, it's imposing. 
you feel kind of wonderfully insignificant almost in the surroundings, the dramatic surroundings at the top of these craggy peaks. It looks otherworldly. It's great for riding. Hone your climbing skills and your descending skills as well. And generally speaking, meet a lot of other like-minded people out on the road. And these are the sorts of sessions you can get you as fit as possible, especially to crunch the time for this sort of riding. So 10 seconds, and then we've got another three minutes. That perceived effort level of eight, back up to sweet spot. Two and one. So back up to eight now, keeping the RPM the same or around the same. Give myself a few moments out of the saddle and back in. So really get locked into this, this rhythm. Just feel that bird in your legs. Don't put yourself into the red. Still got just over 24 minutes to go. A long way on this climb. It's about discipline, pacing, and making you more adaptable to changes in pace. So, for example, you want to head over to the Dolomites and ride the Maratona, which myself and Dan did this year. My first ever experience. We went over the Pordoi, that was the second major climb after the Campo Longo. It's amazing when you're riding with lots of other people, because of the adrenaline that flows, you end up riding a bit too hard too early and you can pay for it later. So, riding at these set levels imposes that little bit of discipline. And if you're doing this session, for the very first time, you might not get it quite right early on. You might go, I think I found seven or eight, and then near the top, you're going to start fatiguing. The more you ride like this, the better you'll become aware of your physical and psychological limitations within how fit you are. And although I think power meters are wonderful things, and definitely a big aid to training, occasionally just riding on on feel, I think it's an important skill set to have as a rider. And don't, don't get me wrong, I'm a big advocate for training with power, two power, but also just riding and understanding yourself. That's why we put these effort levels on the screen. So riders who've got power meters can choose that as well. But also, not everybody has access to a power meter. So understanding your effort levels, really, really important when it comes to training, especially endurance stuff. So, you guessed it, we're coming up to the next sprint, remember low cadence, 30 seconds flat out, here we go, come on, all you've got, try and keep the form on the bike, 15 seconds, Dan's out of the saddle, come on. Two, one, done. Okay, keep it at level eight though. You can't let it off. And this is where you are putting yourself into the red, but gradually settling into it. Do all the burn initially. Get the breathing back down to what it was before. Although as we get deeper into this session, that will get harder. But that's what we're doing. The training here, as you know. Just think of the gains. Just think of how much quicker you'll be climbing. Or well, even riding on the flat, your sessions are fantastic. Your ability to 
just be stronger and quicker as a rider. To apply to the flat, it's just a look at the scenery. Why well, wouldn't you want to do an indoor training session like this? It inspires you. And also, if it's a long session, you can admire the scenery and maybe even book your holiday. No, don't do that. Do it after the brew. So, keeping it at a sweet spot. Just over a minute and a half. Two sprints down, two to go. Eating up the tarmac now, guys. And also one of the reasons we break these sessions up is because we all do it, we're guilty of it, and there's nothing like it, just going on your bike and not thinking and just riding along. But if you're looking at making gains, which many of us are, either losing weight, getting fitter, aiming to win a race at whatever level, aiming to ride your first 100 miles or your first Grand Fondo, or sportif, then running at just one pace is fine, but you can get yourself into a little bit of a rut from a training perspective. To mix up your training is what I'm trying to say by going around the houses. Mix it up, but within each session mix it up as well. Different ways of pedaling, different ways of putting power through the bike, different types of intervals, different sorts of terrain so if you can you've got a plan down at home and stick to it but importantly make sure you rest up and also make sure you continue to enjoy riding your bike the moment you start to get stale knock it on the head take a day off you'll come back a lot fresher mentally okay knocking it down now for level seven, still nice and tempo. So just a little bit more control in the breathing. Notes to be different than level eight. Still, you should feel that bite. So this is the sort of speed you should be able to ride at for around two hours, give or take. So this sort of session really does give you a lot of bang for your buck. We have so many indoor training sessions now on the channel. There should be something for everybody, regardless of your aims and ambitions as a rider, regardless of your level of fitness, there really is something for everybody. We've even got spin classes too, add another different dimension to it. So have a browse through our library and take your pick and incorporate them a couple of times a week into training, you'll definitely see the performance gains. So, another minute 45 of tempo, then we lift it again to a sweet spot. And just make sure you're drinking plenty. Make sure, before you get your session, it's a really good idea to have a really set routine in preparing yourself. Doesn't need to take long. If you get a mat, some newspaper down so you don't damage the floor, get yourself a, a towel so it doesn't corrode your headset on your bike. Also you can wipe yourself down. Make sure you've got maybe two bead-ons on the bike. You've got two belt bottle cages. I've got my assistants here who might give me another bottle if I need it. If you're on your own, have another, another bottle to hand. Keep yourself fully hydrated. But before the ride itself as well, make sure you're fully hydrated as well. If you get too hot on a session like this, it can really adversely affect your performance. So well ventilated space, plenty of fluids, be hydrated in the first instance. They even put some music on as well in the background if you want that too. I certainly like music. I take my iPhone, into the gym, stick one of these on, and have some music in the background too. Best of both worlds. Okay, 15 seconds, 
just gonna press my backside before we take it up to tempo again. Feel that bite. Okay. Okay, that's it. Just another click up. Another three minutes. That sweet spot. Keep it nice and smooth. Think about how you're pedaling. And focus on the road ahead. About two thirds away out now. The Paso Pordoy. See all the snow melt there. Dan, hugging the inside line. We're going to Paso Bordoy, a beautiful climb, a very even gradient. I think it's about seven, seven and a half percent all the way up, give or take. No real steep pitches, a couple of the hairpins, but generally speaking, one of those climbs, you can get to a good rhythm and hold it. That's biting a bit hard there for me, that was. If you find deep into a session like this, it's burning a bit much, your breathing's getting ragged, just knock it back a bit by using the sprockets. It's about understanding yourself. Listen to your breathing, know what you can hold, and hold it. So 90 RPM. Okay, under 15 minutes now, we're doing great. This is a hard session. Two more sprints to go. The next of which is coming in just over a minute. You can hear my breathing. It's hard to talk. Easier to talk at level seven, at tempo. I can't speak for too long at this speed, although it is sustainable. So excuse me if I quieten down a bit. There we go. Nice and smooth. Enjoy the view. Enjoy what the Dolomites have got to offer. Just imagine riding in the footsteps, or the wheel track, should I say, of some of the finest rides that have ever ever ridden a bike. That's the beauty of this sport. It's a sport we love, it's a sport we cherish. And one of the most wonderful things about it, you can get your bike and ride in the theater of where some of the most dramatic and epic battles took place in the history of bike racing. Okay, next step, here we go. 70 RPM, come on. Keep the form. Drive the power. Okay, well done. Level eight though, keep it up. It's gonna hurt. But you'll break back in. This is what these pyramids are all about. A gradual decrease in power. A gradual increase in power. It's all about control, discipline. This will help your FTP. These types of sessions you'll see with good rest, good nutrition, those physiological changes deep within your muscles make you a better rider. And it's this deep in a session. Sometimes I wonder, why do I do it? Why do I hurt myself? Then I realize it's because I love it and I like feeling fit on my bike. And also, I happen to like cake. Yeah, and I bet a lot of you do as well. Cake is good. It tastes even sweeter when you've trained hard and you deserve it. So, simple 
kind of offbeat philosophy there. I did it for more than that, but yeah, cake's up there. So keep it sweet spot. Try not to rock too much on your bike. And in doing that, it's not about gripping the bars too tight. You want to grip the bars firmly, but be relatively relaxed, have some give in your wrists. And drive the power through your core as well. Just over a minute before we now drop back down to tempo, which I'm going to be pretty glad of. But then it's back up again to the final sprint of this session. So three sprints are done. Just over 10 minutes now. So keep it going, come on. Think about what you want to achieve as a rider. Okay? And this sort of thing is one of the small sacrifices you make. Hurting yourself, but you can just bask in the warm afterglow of a training session. That's a special feeling. Whether you've been out on a long run for three, four, five hours, or you've hurt yourself on a turbo session, you all get that same feeling. So a few seconds, I can knock it down. Two and one. Oh, that feels better. It's amazing, just that one level. It's easier to get control of my breathing again. Keep the cadence the same. Back off the power. So we're riding at that nice tempo. It's a brisk pace. Excuse me. That might get on the end up on the editor's floor. Yeah, tempo is a swift pace. You're very aware of your breathing, you can talk. Should be able to sustain an hour and a half, two hours. That's assuming you're doing that level all, all along. Because often when you're riding out in the group, you're sat in the wheel, you're not working as hard. And when you're in the wind, or moving up, or trying to cross a gap, or having stopped for a call of nature, you've got to chase back in. That's where all these, the training seconds, uh, sessions that deal with variable, variable pace changes come into their own. You've got to understand to be not a complete rider, a better rider. You need to be able to adapt out on the road. And ultimately it might just be that you can ride more comfortably. You might not want to go surging up the road on a climb. You might not want to do any sprints, but training hard, will mean that when you do go out experiencing places like this, you can soak it up without being nailed to the road. So these sessions, although they're brutal, they're for everybody. These aren't tailored specifically towards elite riders or beginners, they are for everybody. So regardless of the watts you're putting out, or the speed you're turning a particular gear, stick to your levels, and you'll make your gains. All that waffling has now taken us very near to the next kick up. We're nearly at the top. I'm just gonna give myself a little opportunity, keeping the power the same. Okay, I've lowered my cadence, but that's fine. It's the way I often ride on climbs. Five to six minutes in the saddle, then 150 meters on a bigger gear out of the saddle. Before lowering myself gently back in, and it's business as usual. So, another 10 seconds or so before we lift it for the very last time. Well, it's an ultimate time because we've got one more sprint to go. So, here we go, lift it. Never late, come on. Starting to bite again. This is where this session is going to start to hurt. I'm 
You're doing great, guys. Had to gear down in myself. See the top around one of these bends. Go on to the bridge, the ski station at the top. And there it is, you can just see it. There's the bridge. And the Fausto Coffee Memorial at the top of the climb as well. One of the iconic, legendary Italian riders, Italian hero. So it's always worth, if you do get up here, stop at the top, stop, get yourself a cappuccino, depending on the time of day, of course. If you don't want to cause too much controversy. And check out the memorial to copy. And then descend the other side and soak it up. It is amazing. So, just focus on the job at hand, keep that form. It'll help if you do some core work. I've been doing core work for the last four or five years now. It'll really help me on my bike. Okay, I don't race anymore. I just feel stronger. Wanting to put in the power through. It's really helped give my body a proper sturdy structure and platform from where to pedal. So if you're not doing it already, look it up on our channel and give it a go, it'll help maximise these sorts of sessions. Okay. Now fatigue's starting to kick in now. Just keep it smooth. And one more effort guys, okay? So chuffed with this. Fifteen to the last effort, guys. Remember, low, low cadence, high torque, 60 RPM. 60, 70 RPM. One more to go. Okay, focus. Get the gear ready. One, and go. All the way, guys, come on. Fifteen. Five. Okay. Oh. Give me a moment. Drop it down to level five. Start your warm down. Well done, guys. Say hello to the sheep. <coughs> Fantastic effort. Wow. That was the training session of the four Ps. Paso Podoy Power Pyramids. Help with your endurance, power, and also explosive efforts. But most of all, riding at tempo and sweet spot, holding it there, keeping that cadence to stay the same, and instilling that skill set, that discipline regimen. Because pacemaking on a climb, whether you like it or not, is an art form that you can hone and you can get better at the more you do it. To get better, riding more efficiently and at the same time getting stronger and it's all of these manifold qualities and aspects to cycling that make it such a fascinating proposition for so many people so we can see the top a stretch should have done that earlier keep sipping should have drunk some more it's me chatting away, so definitely drink more than I did on that session. So gradually, as this little warm, three minute warm down, 
grind saw hold, just decrease the effort. Left a lever about three. Just turn the pedals. So you can control your breathing. And look back at just what you've done. That's a great session. And we do have a lot more sessions on our channel for you. A real variety that we're adding to all the time. Okay, so just coming towards the end. At the top of the climb now. Perfect timing from Dan. Mm. Look at that, he's nailed that session, isn't he? Absolutely amazing. If you just continue over the top, you'll get to the memorial for copy. Well, mm. thank you very much for joining me on the Paso Pordoi Power Pyramid session. I've really enjoyed it. Now, if you haven't already subscribed to GCN, the Global Cycling mm. Network, click on the globe. You can do that for absolutely free. Mm. And that will unlock a wealth of other cycling content. And while we're on the subject of training cycling content, how about clicking just down here for our spin up the Campolongo climb, as Dan has a bit of a natter on the screen, or click just down here for when I joined Team Sky at a training camp and we did a talk session together. And don't forget to like and share.